have a huge problem. That looks like blight. Yeah, definitely. Could lose the whole flipping crop. <laughs> Blight is a pathogen that thrives in wet, humid conditions and after one of the wettest Julys in my living memory, our entire crop has been devastated with it. Let's take a closer look. It starts off by infecting the plant themselves and then it spreads down through the plant into the tubers. I don't know, can you see it from, from this one? But the plant became infected and it's gone right down now into the tubers. How you can spot blight is with these brown lesions on the leaves that eventually form and cause the rest of the plant to die off. But it's not the end of the world. There's a couple of steps we can take to try and rescue whatever is left that's good in the ground. Um, and we're going to start by topping the plants. Get rid of the, the plant material that is infected. And then we have to take all of the spuds up early. They should have been in the ground for another month at least. Um, go away, fly. But we're going to have to take them all up today. We grow our potatoes using the traditional Irish method of planting in raised mounds known as drills. This allows for better ventilation around the plant as it's growing and results in the potatoes developing in the drill instead of below ground, which of course means less backache when harvesting a whole year's worth all at one time. I'm kind of working my way through the third row here at the moment and I found this patch where the blight has gone right down to the tubers. And this highlights the urgency to get them out of the ground as quick as possible. As you can kind of take it as a cert that every plant, oh look at that, that's nasty. Every plant has been infected so it's only a matter of time before it spreads down and into the spuds themselves. The more I dig, oh look, there's loads of it. Yeah, they're literally rotting in the ground. Right, so for the next part of this, we've got a bit of a rough and ready wash table set up here. Just a garden hose, some scrubbing brushes, and a wheelbarrow on one end. It's got a slight tilt on it so it can, uh, so the spuds can roll down into the barrow once they're cleaned. I know some of you like to keep the soil on them, you have your reasons for that, but in this case we're going to wash them off so that we can find any rotten ones like this. You see that have multiple bits of where slugs have eaten into them? That's going to rot in storage, so we need to find them today if possible. The wash table is actually a bit of a handy setup. It's just some of that shade netting and you can lift it up. I hope you can see that. I don't know, can you? Yeah, there's chicken wire there, so you can actually use this as a grading table as well to separate out the small spuds and the big spuds if you want. First thing we're going to do is wash them anyway. Now, another thing we've got going on over here is we have the old washing machine burner up and running because all of these have to get burnt. We can't put them in the compost because they're all infected. So uh, all we can do with them now is just burn them off. Once we have the spuds all washed up, they're going to come in here, same as last year, basically. A little square on the floor to let them dry out and cure for two weeks. And um, we'll be able to find any rotten ones that we've missed now at this stage um, over the course of that two weeks. So, uh, so I'm going to get back cracking on washing here and uh, we'll see how we go. Let's see what way they are now today. Okay, not too bad. 24 hours later and we got them all washed. And it only took about two hours, wasn't that bad. But at least now we can see the condition of them a lot better. And dare I say it, at this early stage, it looks like we've managed to rescue most of them. Now, over the next two weeks, 
there's still going to be a few that will pop up rotten here in storage and will start to, to, to go bad while they're here in storage but at least with them laid out like this we can see them pretty quickly and just whip them out and dump them straight away before they manage to infect any of the others overall the quality this year it's not great we had a full barrel load i would estimate a full barrel load anyway that we lost to pest damage like slugs eating into them and rotten in the ground when we were digging there was three plants where the blight had spread completely down to the tubers and what we dug up out of the ground there was just a rotten, stinking, festering mess. But for the majority of them, it looks like we've been able to rescue them, which is great news. So at least now we know, and you guys know as well, that if you spot blight on your potatoes, there's a course of action you can take where you won't lose the whole crop and you might be able to save a good lot of them like we have here at the moment. What I want to do next now is I'm going to pick out two rotten looking ones or two of the worst looking ones I can find and just cut them open and check for any traces of blight on the inside of the spud which will appear as little brown dots or little little tiny little rotten dots inside the spud so let's see if we can find two that don't look great that's probably the one I will take three sure for the crack and we'll set these up now cut them open I'm going to use my trusty DIY Japanese saw and let's just cut them open and see what we get Now you can see, got a bit around the edges there where that scab is kind of coming into the spud. Let's just try go again with it. No, it's all on the skin, nothing actually inside the potato. Alright, let's try another one. Let's try this one. You can see that there now that's just pest damage that's where a little slug is eating his way in through the skin and he's just started munching away on the inside causing it to rot it's not actually blight take another little snip from it yeah all clean inside no traces of blight on the inside that's uh that bit there now if it wasn't on the other side of where that slug has been eaten that could be misinterpreted as it, but that's just the other side of where that little slug was nibbling away. If we just chop into that, we'll get a better cross section. Yeah, you can see he's been tunneling away through there. Okay, test sample number three. And again, everything seems to be just on the skin. The inside of the potato, all good. Let's try again. Yeah. All perfect on the inside. Great news. The final step then here is dealing with the soil. See that's still infected with all that blight so we can't put anything in there now until next season at the very earliest. One thing that will help is to turn over the soil a couple of times between now and next season. So what I'm going to do in about a month's time I'm going to come out and I'm going to turn the soil in all of those drills, leave it sit then like that for the winter and then in the first month of spring come back out turn all the soil again and plant something totally different in that for next season it's on its second year anyway so it was due a crop rotation i suppose and um, realistically speaking we'll see then how next year's crop of something else gets on in there and hopefully then that'll be the end of the blight problem so to solve this issue spotted the blight on the plant cut the head off dig up the spuds straight away don't leave them in the ground to rot get them washed get them sorted then any rotten ones get them out and then you leave them to cure for the two to three weeks, however long it takes. Finally then your soil, come out, turn it, and leave it sit idle then until next season. You can speed this process up if you want to use sprays or chemicals, things like that, but we don't like to do that here. Whatever you do is your own choice. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys, hope you found it useful. This is how we dealt with blight for the first time ever. But we did find a course of action, so stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. You take care of yourselves out there.